Welcome to No Longer Conformed. I'm Eric Garthy, and we are studying practical Christianity, learning to relate to one another. In this session, we're going to look at Ephesians chapter 4, in the second part of verse 32, forgive one another. You know, I had a car once that developed an electrical short that drained the battery. Couldn't figure out where it was, what was causing the problem, but even standing still with everything turned off, it just continued to drain the battery. Well, let me tell you something. That right there is a picture of the effect of bitterness in a life. Another car that I had um, had back, bad uh, spark plug wires. They were getting dry rot and cracking. And so when the engine was running, the spark plugs wires were arcing to the nearest metal from the spark plug because the wire rubber was cracked. At night, he opened up the hood, turned the engine on. It was like a fireworks display going on. Everything, each one arcing to the closest piece of metal. And so the car didn't function the way it was supposed to because the electricity that was going from the battery to the spark plug wasn't all getting there the way it needed to. And so it was running rough. Let me tell you something. This also is a picture of unforgiveness in a life. Our text says, forgiving one another, even as God in Christ forgave you. Biblical forgiving includes refusing to continue to blame or resent the one you've forgiven. It means restoring the relationship with one who has wronged you. This is a very hard thing for us as human beings. If you really want to be obedient to this command of the Lord, if you surrender to God's call to forgive others as you have been forgiven in Christ, then you should consider Jacob's brother Esau after Jesus Christ and maybe Joseph. No character in the Bible seems to have forgiven more or in a better way. Before considering the process of forgiving from Esau's example, let's look at the problem of not forgiving. Mark chapter 11, verse 25. And whenever you stand praying, if you have anything against anyone, forgive him, that your Father in heaven may also forgive your trespasses. Notice the word, that. If you refuse to forgive, you yourself remain in an unforgiven state with God. What does that mean for a believer in Christ? You still possess your eternal life, but you have no fellowship with the Lord, and you are miserable. Psalm 66, verse 18, David said, if I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. No forgiveness, no fellowship with God, no joy in life, and yet forgiving is always possible. God provided a process for forgiving an offender, and we can see it in Esau's life, not Jacob, in Esau's life. Remember the story that Esau was tricked by Jacob to give his birthright to Jacob, that would be his inheritance to Jacob for a bowl of soup. And then he, Jacob tricked his father Isaac to giving him the blessing of the firstborn by tricking him, disguising himself as Esau. And that, of course, that didn't go well in the end because he saw when he came to his senses and realized that he had been tricked twice of his birthright and of his inheritance, he vowed to kill Jacob. And then Jacob was sent off by his mother to hide um, 
among the relatives far away with his uncle Laban. And he went there and he stayed there for 20 years. 20 years. And then God told him to come back. Told him it was time to come home. And so Jacob, is like, what happened with Esau was still just as fresh with Jacob as when it happened. And then look at what it says in Genesis chapter 33, verses 1 to 11. Now Jacob lifted his eyes and looked, and there Esau was coming, and with him were 400 men. So he divided the children among Leah and Rachel and the two maidservants. And he put the maidservants and their children in front, Leah and her children behind, and Rachel and Joseph last. Then he crossed over before them and bowed himself to the ground seven times until he came near to his brother. But Esau ran to meet him and embraced him and fell on his neck and kissed him. And they wept and, they, and he lifted his eyes and saw the women and children and said, who are these with you? And he said, these children whom God has, the children whom God has graciously given to your servant. And then the maidservants came near, and they and their children and bowed down. And Leah also came near with her children, and they bowed down. Afterward, Joseph and Rachel came near, and they bowed. And then Esau said, what do you mean by all this company which I met? And he said, these are to find favor in the sight of my Lord. But Esau said, I have enough, my brother. Keep what you have for yourself. And Jacob said, no, please, if I have found, if I have now found favor in your sight, then receive my present from my hand. Inasmuch as I have seen your face as though I have seen the face of God and you were pleased with me, please take my blessing that is brought to you because God has dealt graciously with me and because I have enough. So he urged him and he took it. Listen. The process of forgiving. There must be a decision to forgive. Feelings of forgiveness may or may not follow. There must be a daily commitment to forget, to refuse to dwell on past hurts. There must be a partnership established. Verse 10, Jacob said, no, please, if I have now found favor in your sight, then receive my present from my hand inasmuch as I have seen your face as though I had seen the face of God and you were pleased with me. When genuine forgiveness is extended, God is real to people. Unresolved hurts from unforgiveness are a symptom of spiritual sickness. And yet the good news is that for all who choose to forgive, there is a physician willing to heal, Jesus. Who do you refuse to forgive? Who are you keeping in blame and resentments? Well, let me encourage you, choose to obediently forgive that person today. First, ask God to forgive you of bitterness one another we deal we relate to one another we need to learn to do that you have a great day